Hi everyone, Don Gennetti, The Food Workshop. We're looking at one light setups. This is video number one of one light setups. Let's get into this. This is not going to be your typical one softbox or one uh, umbrella type approach. You're going to be really surprised at what one light and the different configurations that that can mean can do for food photography. First up, Anders Ericsson. Anders has a photograph here of pouring water, hot water, into tea. The light's coming through the window. Looks like moonlight, some sort of uh, daylight coming in here. Look how beautiful the, the warmth from the candle spreads out onto the table here. We've got a little bit of fill over here. One light. And what is that light? Well, simply speaking, Anders took a pro photo outside and aimed it through the window. And that's it. That is it. There is a white card over on the right side over here, a little bit farther away from these, these uh, buns, and you can see it reflecting here. But there is only one light source. You can do this with a speed light. You can do this with a, uh, you know, any brand of of strobe that you have you just don't modify it and have it come through the windows and the window panes all the way through here now one thing that's really really interesting about this uh, are the window panes the the angles of them and they indicate a single light source here not the sun or the sky because they would be more even in angle they they indicate something close but you know what you know what very few people are going to catch that um, you just have to go with it Anders did two exposures one for the strobe and one for the candle but you could obviously do it as a long exposure if you want to just let the candle burn out he did not want to let the candle burn in for a couple of reasons one of them being if the Campbell the Campbell the candle did uh, infect this over here with a little bit of light from the long exposure, it would be moving because it can't hold still for as long as it took to let the candle come in. It's a pretty interesting photograph by Anders Ericsson. Here's Cody Monroy with this incredible little pie shot. Look at how pretty the light is. This is white whipped cream against a white background. It holds its own up here. We've got the, the little shavings of chocolate, a beautiful highlight here. In the cup, a little bit of bubbles over here. Even though they're out of focus, the bubbles tell us that the that the tea or the hot coffee is is hot and you know fresh. It's not a dead cup of coffee. Always want to add a few bubbles, maybe a, a, I mean just a tiny, tiny bit of detergent if you can't get a bubble. Tiny bit of detergent. Use an eyedropper or something to squeeze it. Get a few bubbles because it will make the uh, surface of the of the liquid look so much better. Look at this gorgeous light as it wraps all the way around here. Now this is the height of what you call an unfancy lighting setup. It's a window with a large white card. And that's it. Just let the, you can see the sidewalk outside and everything. Just shooting right down on the, uh, the surface here, getting just the pie and letting the fill card angled and leaning into the window be all this beautiful light here with a real solid feeling of backlight isn't that that wonderful it's just a really nice way to do it let's look at that lighting again one card leaning against the window so there's no dark area up here for anything to reflect that goes right up to the window and she makes kind of a little a-frame tent over the food and it works perfectly Let's take one more look at that lovely pie shot. Really, really nice. That's by Cody Montroy. James Kern uses color magnificently. Really, really has very colorful food. It magnifies the color. And in this particular case, he's really showing off the texture, the color, the vibrance of all this food with one single light. The light, as you can see, is coming from the back. It's one of the things we emphasize, the circle, uh, or sorry, the arc of beauty. 
It's so important to keep it. This is the light. A soft box, angled a little bit through some translum. This is the, the diffuser. The angle lets him play a little bit with the modeling of the light on the, the surface of the translum. You can't really see it in the picture, but you could see it if you're doing it. You'll see how it changes the picture. So he's angled that light just a little bit coming in through that translum there. One single light. This light is only used in this particular case for him to take the behind the scenes shot there in his studio. This is the only light that was used for the shot. Let's look at the shot again. You see that light just coming in from the back really, really nicely. Got a white card to the side over here, but that's really just to open up some of these little shadows in here. Everything else, as you can see to the front, he lets it go dark. Really, really nicely done. Our last shot here is John McAllister. Now, John is using a, a complex setup, but still one light. And uh, he wanted a moody, texturally grainy, kind of old-timey feel to this. We've got coffee beans and the coffee grinder and everything going on. You see how the light kind of feels like it comes down through like a little corridor here? Well, that's exactly what's going on here. He's taking a softbox. Now, now figure that, that his camera is right about here coming in. He's taking the softbox, moving it back a bit from the normal distance that it would be from the the the, uh, the, the uh, subject. You know, we like to get our light in very, very close. And then between the softbox and the camera, he's got a black card angled to create a triangle of light here that gets to the surface. On this side, he's blocking the light from coming forward by black foam core. So he's created a little tunnel of light with the softbox aiming behind the set. This is feathering the light. This is the feather of that softbox. You see that? The softbox isn't aimed at the subject. It's aimed behind the subject, and we're just pulling a little bit of light from that triangle. Let's look at the work again. You can see how, how just really emotional and sexy this, this lighting is. It's very, very... Uh, powerful and um, that's what we we tend to do when we want to shoot food and food product is to think about the emotion of the food and this is one light photography your assignment is to do at least a couple of these some windows try something like John did here with the black foam core in front of the light shaping the light from a softbox instead of using just the softbox use part of the softbox like john did here um, use use some backlight like james kern did very nicely done we've got cody's simple window light shot right here right on a window one white cord well cord one white card and of course anders erickson uh, with his wonderful shed and one light outside. All right, glad you enjoyed this. This is part one of a two-part series of looking at one light food shots. Now it's your turn to get out there and make one of your own.